Hello friends, welcome to all our non-law team. It's an effort to share the knowledge and benefit everyone with doing different lectures on different topics. If you have any feedback, please share with us. Subscribe to our channel on YouTube. Today we're going to be discussing about hepatorenal syndrome. So it's the beginning of the talk. We will just go over the introduction and then pathophysiology of hepatorenal syndrome. For clinical manifestations and management, there will be a subsequent video tomorrow. All right, let's begin. Introduction. So reports by Frederick in 1861 and Flint in 1863 noted an association among advanced liver disease, ascites, and oligo oliguric renal failure in the absence of a significant renal histologic changes. Followed by that, Hacker and Sherlock, there is a very famous textbook by Sherlock, almost 100 years later unraveled the pathogenesis of HRS. Finally, in the 1960s and 1970s, further investigation, especially by Epstein, demonstrated that renal failure in HRS is due to extreme renal vasoconstriction. And this is the talk that I'm going to be talking. This is going to be the talk, and I want you to remember this: renal vasoconstriction is the cause for hepatorenal syndrome. If you know this much, I think you know the pathophysiology of uh, hepatorenal syndrome. So just remember renal vasoconstriction. Now let's see how that happens. So HRS is a reversible functional impairment uh, in the kidneys that occurs with advanced liver cirrhosis or those with acute fulminant hepatic failures. The hallmark of HRS is that there is an intense renal vasoconstriction with predominant peripheral arterial vasodilatation. Put it in your heads. Intense renal vasoconstriction with predominant peripheral arterial vasodilatation. Tubular function is preserved with absence of the proteinuria or histolic changes in the kidney. Hence, if you end up doing a kidney biopsy in these patients, you will not find anything. So be smart, don't biopsy these patients because already cirrhotic patients are thrombocytopenic. You are putting them at risk for bleeding. There are two types of HRS, type 1 and type 2. So the pathophysiology of HRS is the most advanced stage of the various pathophysiologic derangements that takes place in patients with, H uh, in, with cirrhosis. So when you see a case of hepatorenal syndrome in a patient with cirrhosis, you have to think that this is the end of all the pathophysiologic derangements that takes place in a patient with cirrhosis, meaning their prognosis is very bad. So when you diagnose someone with HRS in cirrhosis, prognosis is bad. Okay. Peripheral arterial vasodilatation with hyperdynamic circulation and subsequent venal vasoconstriction. That's number one. So there is vasodilatation followed by hyperdynamic circulation and then a renal vasoconstriction. Followed by that, there is stimulation of the renal sympathetic nervous system. And then there is also demonstration by various studies of cardiac dysfunction contributing to the circulatory derangements and renal hypoperfusion. There is also action of the different cytokines and vasoactive mediators on the renal circulation and other vascular beds. So four things are peripheral arterial vasodilatation, stimulation of the renal sympathetic nervous system, cardiac dysfunction and cytokines. If you remember this, this is the pathophysiology of the HRS. Let's look into each one of them individually. So peripheral arterial vasodilatation. So effective circulating volume is decreased and that happens because of the increased splanchnic pooling of the blood and increased vasodilator production leading to systemic and splanchnic circulation vasodilatation and the low circulating volume leads to what leads to secretion and activation of the RAS system and that would be renin angiotensin aldosterone pathway and here is the classic study demonstrating in patients who have ascites sorry no ascites 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 with renal failure which is hepatorenal syndrome so that is for advanced state you see in these patients renin activity is increased significantly followed by norepinephrine and adh which tries to hold on to all the water now markedly elevated norepinephrine renin and rosin level they lead to hyperdynamic circulation 
and also as the liver disease advances planktonic vessel irritation will predominate and is the main cause for hyperdynamic circulation so in the beginning it's the elevated level of the norepinephrine renin and aldosterone level because of the low circulating volume and then in later stage of the cirrhosis it is the just splanchnic vessel dilatation predominantly leading to hyperdynamic circulation which causes increase in the cardiac output decreased svr and hypotension now next one which is the stimulation of the renal sympathetic nervous system in an animal study it has been demonstrated that if you ligate the ivc and increase the intrahepatic pressure you tend to see that the renal sympathetic mimetic activity goes up and that is called as hepatorenal reflex <clears throat> what is interesting is that in that study they tried to denervate the canal's carotid sinus they did the vagotomy and they did the phrenectomy there was a still hepatorenal reflex going on now what later on they found was that if they did hepatic nerve degeneration then they would not see this reflex suggesting that there are particular reflex that travels from the liver which is sensed due to the stretching of the receptors in the liver because of the increase in the pressure which then goes to the brain and comes down through the sympathetic nervous system to the brain or the spinal cord and comes down to the kidneys and that is nothing but hepatorenal reflex there is also a similar reflex that has been demonstrated in patients with pure portal hypertension called as a splenorenal reflex in animal models for a human data if you try to translate this thing when you do tips which is the transjugular intrahepatic portosystemic shunt occlusion you see that the renal blood flow is reduced and the other thing is when you do lumbar sympathectomy it increases the gfr because you are cutting the efferent arm to the kidneys of the hepatorenal reflex what about cardiac dysfunction so cardiac dysfunction has been demonstrated as increase in the heart rate and cardiac output which are very characteristic features of any hyperdynamic circulation as in the cirrhotic studies but on the contrary in animal studies we have seen that the cardiac function actually is reduced and here is the data for that in this study if you see they looked at the three different parameters cardiac output mean arterial pressure and systemic vascular resistance in patients who developed a systemic sorry sbp which is spontaneous bacterial peritonitis in cirrhotic patients those who go on to develop renal failure with hrs and those who did not develop renal failure what they found was svr was same in both the cases mean arterial pressure was same in both the cases but the cardiac output was low in patients who developed renal failure but not in patients who did not develop another study demonstrating the same where the cardiac output was significantly low in patients who go on to develop renal failure rather than those patients who did not develop any renal failure this is a third study which is demonstrating the same thing um, but on this side is the plasma renin activity and here is the cardiac output which is separated by a decent p value and his most significant p value of 0.0001 and it is 0.01 still a significant p value so based on this we can say that a decrease in the cardiac output identifies a group of patients who are at increased risk of developing hrs so you can try to keep a close eye on those patients who have reduced cardiac output what could be the possible mechanisms based on all these studies number 1 neurohumeral hyperactivity leading to myocardial fibrosis and impaired relaxation diminished beta adrenergic receptor signal transduction and inhibitory effects of the cytokines on ventricular function the fourth one is the cytokines and the vasoactive mediator as you know nitric oxide leads to vasodilatation shear stress in the splanchnic and the systemic circulation along with endotoxins will stimulate the nitric oxide synthase causing nitric oxide leading to vasodilatation if you see in cirrhotic patients nitric oxide concentrations are higher than normal individuals or those with compensatory cirrhosis high nitric oxide levels also correlates with high plasma ras activity which is which is renin angiotensin aldosterone pathway and ads levels and low urine sodium excretion suggesting you are holding all on the water and there is also concentration of the nitric oxide more in the splanchnic circulation than the systemic circulation now despite all these ras system being activated which should cause technically vasoconstriction and in the systemic vasoconstriction that is explained by nitric oxide 
so nitric oxide is doing what is doing vasodilatation then why is that just in kidneys you don't get vasodilatation so you get systemic vasodilatation we agree because nitric oxide is more compared to the ras pathway then why not in kidneys it's because of this compound dimethyl arginine which is known to antagonize the nitric oxide synthase effect in the kidneys hence nitric oxide synthesis in the kidneys goes down and the ras system overtakes in the kidneys causing renal vasoconstriction Another thing is that the prostaglandin production is also reduced in patients with HRS. This can be demonstrated by giving NSAIDs to patients who have cirrhosis and you can reproduce HRS kind of syndrome in these patients suggesting there is a role of prostaglandins. However, on the contrary, if you infuse prostaglandins to treat a patient with HRS, you would not see the same benefit suggesting this is not the sole player in HRS. So remember, prostaglandins do play a part, but they are not the same thing. If you give NSAIDs to patients with HRS, they will produce a syndrome which is similar to HRS. Hence, you should always avoid using NSAIDs to patients with cirrhosis. This is just summarizing all the things that we just spoke about, which is cirrhosis of the liver, intrahepatic pressure goes up, portal hypertension, increase in the nitric oxide leading to splanchnic vessel radiation decreasing the effective circulating volume sensed by the brain causes release of the ADH which tries which tells kidneys to hold on to the water sensed by the baroreceptors leads to activation of the sympathetic nervous system leading to a heart causing tachycardia with hyperdynamic circulation and cardiac dysfunction it also leads to kidneys retaining more fluid effective circulating volume going down goes to the renal vasculature activates the RAS system and leads to retention of the sodium and the water so this is the gist of the hepatorenal syndrome. Thank you. Please subscribe to our channel All or None Law. And our next video will be on the clinical features and management of the hepatorenal syndrome.